Welcome back. Yo Digo No Mas, or I Say No More, is a movement founded by Maria Teresa to empower survivors of sexual assault. The movement seeks to bring an end to what Teresa calls the silent pandemic that affects millions of children, women, and men globally. Today, Maria Teresa joins me to discuss her journey with the movement and its efforts to empower survivors. Maria, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me here. Now, as I mentioned, um, the movement is Yo Digo No Mas, or I Say No More. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that movement? Uh, the movement uh, became a movement when I wrote my own story of uh, sexual abuse. I'm a survivor of sexual abuse at the age of nine in the Dominican Republic. Um, it wasn't easy for me to share my story, and it was a story that for 47 years I kept as a secret uh, for our family. Um, this, what happened to me in the Dominican Republic was well known because I came from a very small town and uh, I was brutally raped by uh, someone that my father uh, gave me to. Um, I decided to write the book because m one of my kids actually asked me to do it. I've had a very successful life. I have been able to go from the ashes and rebuild an amazing life. And I, I wrote the book, it came out, uh, I Say No More, it's the same name as the movement, uh, Yo Digo No Mas. And um, I started doing public speaking engagement, and then I realized that this is not just my story, that there are millions of children that are, have been sexually abused, that are, are being sexually abused, and I decided to say no more. Now, as you mentioned, you know, there's millions of people who are affected by this, but you described the, mo well, just the, the issue of sexual assault as a silent pandemic. Can you just tell us a little bit more about, you know, why you view it as a silent pandemic um, and, you know, just where that mindset was when you, when you came up with this term? Yes. So over 93% of the abuse that gets reported, and it is estimated that only 30% of the abuse gets reported, out of the every nine minutes, a child is sexually abused in the United States. These are statistics that are heartbreaking because there is the, that other 70% that is not being reported. So the silent is what feeds the pandemic. And the silent exists because over 93%, the monster is in the house. So it is. it could be your dad, it could be your your uh, grandfather, your uncle, um, the stepdad. I hear stories over the past four years of having this movement that uh, to me there is a major, major urgency in addressing this. And the thing that makes it very, very difficult is the fact that the monster is in the house. So it's a family member and we don't want to accept it. I mean, I, there are children that are telling their mom uh, I'm being abused by my dad and the mom is being supported by the dad, the dynamic is extremely complex. So the silent feeds this pandemic. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, as we mentioned, you know, it's affecting millions of people, especially, you know, children and women. And of course, there are some men who are also affected by this. But the organization highlights how this type of violence uniquely affects migrants or undocumented people in America. Can you tell us a little bit more about that finding? The undeserved community, it's undeserved, right? And we get affected. I mean, I consider myself an undeserved community. When I came here, uh, I am not undeserved now. I actually serve the undeserved community. Uh, but there is, there is less education. That is why it's so important that we educate. One of my dreams, and I'm really working uh, diligently on b uh, br bringing a curriculum to the school district because the school could start teaching the children how to protect themselves and having the conversation in it in a very uh, methodical psychological way could start at the beginning of the school year. Um, unfortunately, the, the immigrant community have less resources. They have less education. And there's also uh, even where they live, there is people that sleep in the same bed uh, with children and the, the social norms that they bring from our country, like in the Dominican Republic, I mean, the children should not be sitting on the laps of the adults, no child. 
a child needs to be heard. We have the tendency of having a, almost like a dictatorship of parenting. And that comes from social norms that were given to us, especially now, for the immigrant community. Now, I really want to highlight something you mentioned, um, and it was having these types of conversations in schools. Now, I know uh, whenever we talk about consent, um, especially with young children, uh, a lot of people have differing opinions, but I understand that you have a similar stance in regards to bringing it to the schools with the parenting curriculum. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So the curriculum will be involving the, the teachers, the students, uh, there will be social workers, and the parents. Uh, my, my goal and, and wish is to start teaching parents as soon as the woman gets pregnant. Let's start talking on how to protect your child, how to speak with your child about sexual abuse. Most parents that I talk to, they don't even know how to start the conversation. This is why with movement, we focus a lot on education. We have a conference that is happening on the 13th of this month, which is the month that is dedicated to bringing the awareness of sexual assault. Um, and during that conference, there's gonna be workshops in teaching parents how to start the conversation. So with the school, this is where the opportunity is and there are so many cases that I know that I know that if those children would be, if we would be having the conversation in the school, those children will come out and feel safe to speak. And how does your organization educate survivors um, as well as allies? Because I think that is also very important. I, um, I am collaborating and I'm very proud of this collaboration with an organization called RAIN. Uh, RAIN has been an organization over 30 years, and most people don't even know about it. One of the things that I've become is I call myself, myself the voice for the voiceless. So I'm going to speak. I, I do a lot of speaking engagements because this pandemic needs to be brought out. And RAIN has a lot of education. So when people go into the website for yodigonomas.com, uh, they're able to go through to a link that brings them to RAIN. It's in Spanish and English. And even in our website, we have a parenting guide. So the education is a big piece. But breaking the silence is actually the most difficult and the most important piece because that silence, again, as I said at the beginning, feeds the pandemic. Now you're doing such an amazing job at just like bringing awareness. And I also want to highlight that there's a talk show, um, hashtag Yo Digo No Mas. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, you know, the creation of that and how it's continuing your effort to break the silence? Thank you so much for bringing that up because for me, that talk show, I'm extremely proud of that talk show. And I'll tell you why, because I'm not a journalist. I own a medical center in emerging care and I serve the underserved community in my medical center. And to me, that was the mission that I've had. But when I realized that this mission was given to me by God, because I truly believe it, I decided to take on and be able to actually speak fluent in Spanish, but in a professional level. And I hire a speech coach for two years. Mm. Two years, every week I worked on my speaking. And, and speaking. And I decided to bring this talk show because I said, it's not just my story, there's millions of stories. So I would ask people that would be ready to tell their story without filtering it because we filter it and then we're hiding. I don't want the hiding anymore. So we have over 30 uh, interviews, over 500,000 views on that on the, on the talk show. And I had the privilege of interviewing Mayor Mike Spano uh, of Yonkers, who is a survivor at the age of 12. And he gave me his story. And he also joined the movement, Yo Digo No Mas. And uh, we, this is our third year on April 27th that we are walking. We closed the streets of Yonkers to walk against sexual abuse of children. So the voice, it's getting really strong. And I'm inviting everyone uh, that is listening to this, um, we need to unite because it's going to take an army to be able to break the chains of sexual abuse. It's going to take an army. So we need a lot of soldiers in this army. 
Now, what methods could we use as a society, uh, because it's everyone's responsibility to protect their children um, and others, you know, what can we use as a society to help prevent this type of violence? We need to educate on the signs of, first, educate to prevent. So education is key. We need to start speaking about it because the speaking, like I said, just keeps it. Uh, it's very uncomfortable. Everybody says to me, it's very uncomfortable to talk about this subject. When I started speaking and doing videos, even my own uh, media team would say, oh, you shouldn't you know, be so, you shouldn't say I was brutally raped at the age of nine. I was. I don't want to be statistic. We have been numbed by statistics. We need to hear the story so that we can bring the pain to the people that are watching. Pain leads to change. Until people feel the pain, we're not going to make the change that needs to be made. So it is, th this work is so urgent. And the thing that I would urge people is to realize that there is an urgency because you know, talking about mental health, that what happens to a child that is sexually abused, when you lose your innocence, you lose the ability to create. You lost the most precious gift that you were giving, which is the gift of being innocent. The innocence. When that happens to you, your life is 10 times worse. To recover, most people don't recover. I've been speaking in front of younger children at one of at the conference, the keynote speaker is a 14-year-old survivor. And I speak to children, I speak to adults, 80 years old, I, I will never forget this woman saying to me, how do I forgive? I live to forgive. I forgive to live. I forgive to live. Because I realized even speaking with a woman, 80 years old, you could see you could feel, see the pain. She was sexually abused by her dad. And wow. even at 80, she is suffering. The suffering needs to stop. Now, how can people support your organization in this movement? I think it's a powerful movement. And I agree with 100% of what everything you're saying. So what can people do to further support this movement? Um, that's the, the question that I, it's a gold question because I can tell you that I've invested a million dollars of my own money for four years because I see the urgency. And there are times where I feel, why is it that people do not see this as an urgent matter? We need funding. We need people. I have a $10 campaign on the website that nobody really, you know, and we promote this. $10 a month can help us create education material, can help us do all of these walks. Right. We need funding, but in addition to that, we need people to show up. Right. Like the day of the walk, we want thousands of people to be walking with us. The first walk, we had over a thousand people. That's we need, amazing. Yes. So uh, we need people to continue to spread the word and go into the website and educate yourself at least. Well, Maria, I want to thank you so much for joining us, sharing your story, and just talking about you know this topic in depth so thank you so much thank you thank you for having me here to learn more about the Jodigo Nomas movement please go to the website on your screen below or follow them on Instagram at Jodigo Nomas stay tuned we have more with you right after this